members might want to turn your mics on. I like coaching voice. This one. Is on. He says yours. Uh, oh, here. There you go. I am going to call the Salem Park and Recreation District Board of Directors and regular meeting to order. Um, can I, do we want to do a roll call? I mean, we're missing a couple of people, so. Don Loving and Gail Bazo are both excused. Okay. All right. Um, does anyone want to approve? of or make additions to the agenda at this time. I'll approve the agenda as written. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, approval of the consent agenda. Do I have a motion? I move we approve the consent agenda. Aye. I'll second. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Are you saying I too? Hi. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> All right. It has passed. All right. Public participation is, you know, we have the city of Newburgh Urban Renewal. Is Doug going to use online? You are online. Hi, Doug. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing? <laughs> so I have with me tonight. I can't hear you, Doug. You can't hear me. Why is that? Doug, I can hear you, so I think your microphone's can't working. Hear either of you. It must be an audio setting at the. Uh... There, we got you now. Okay, perfect. Can you hear us now? I hear you now. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so, thank you for having us this evening. Uh, I have with us Nick Papanuk from Tiberius Solutions. He was our financial consultant, he did all of our modeling on our urban renewal program. So, he will be here this evening. If you have any questions relating to the financial information. So, uh, so it says host disabled participant screen sharing. So, Kat, can you allow me to share the screen? Yeah, we can do that. In a so, no, just go under the zoom down to the bottom. And uh, share screen with your multi all panelist that's on my bed. Try now, try now, Doug. Okay, I'll try it now. There we go. All right. Okay, so thank you very much. So this evening we're going to give you a presentation on the update on the revised proposal for the Nuremberg urban renewal program. Um, so the graphic that's on your left is kind of all of the activities that we have gone through since actually starting in 2015, but things started to get adopted in 2016. So we've done a lot of activities with creating a downtown plan, updating our transportation system plan, creating a tourism strategy. Uh, we've moved forward and amended and uh, modified our what we call our functional plans, which is our transportation, sewer, water, and wastewater plans. In 2019, we spent a year working with the community on the community visioning program, which the council adopted. Um, we've also gone through the process of doing an economic opportunities analysis. We've done a housing needs analysis. Uh, we've gone back and updated our economic development strategy on a couple of occasions. Um, we've gone back and updated our functional plans uh, based upon the riverfront master plan area to address transportation, wastewater, stormwater, and water improvements that would be necessary. So from what, where we were at back in June of 2020, we were only out to 2021. We've added the column of 2022. Uh, so we've been at this for a while. The graphic at the top right of your screen is actually the Riverfront Master Plan area. And so that was uh, a year and a half long process working with the community to re-envision what they want their riverfront to be. 
Um, so the purple area is industrial. The, the brown area is a mixed employment with a base of industrial. The various shades of yellow, light yellow is medium density. The darker brown is the uh, high density residential and the red is the mixed commercial, which would allow commercial and multifamily development to occur. And then of course it shows the transportation corridors and, and probably the, one of the most important parts of the riverfront plan is we heard from the community and responded about all of the parks and open spaces that they desired. And so we already had Rogers Landing, Ewing Young, uh, Levitt Park, but the community wanted to have that potential for to have the access down to the river and those view corridors over to French Prairie. In the center of this particular slide is our downtown plan. And so that was done and adopted in 2016, and it had 10 big ideas. And infrastructure was kind of a driver for, for much of it. Uh, we talked about and identified improvements to Hancock and First Street, kind of road diets to create more pedestrian friendly, walkable environments in the downtown area. Uh, we identified along Second Street, some redevelopment <laughs> opportunities for mixed uh, development for commercial and multifamily housing. We've got arts and culture are embedded in this particular program. And then on your right hand side is a map of the urban renewal districts that <laughs> exist statewide. And this was gathered from the Oregon Economic Development Association. <clears throat> so there are districts around the state in both rural and urban. <clears throat> So the first step that we went through in this process is to do a feasibility study. So we started that in January of 2020 and we concluded it in July of 2020. Um, the city council created an ad hoc committee. They met six times in preparing the feasibility study. <coughs> we did a lot of uh, public engagement through websites, presentations, Wednesday markets, spent many a day, many a hot day handing out flyers and talking with people about the urban renewal program. And of course, social media posts. We continued to brief the city council and the planning commission about the status of that feasibility study. And probably one of the most important pieces that we continued to provide information to all of the taxing districts that exist within Newburgh, uh, each step of the way so that we were informing them as we were going through the process rather than just waiting and say, ha, oh, here's a plan at the end. So that culminated in July of 2020 with a presentation to the city council of the feasibility study. The conclusion was that urban renewal was feasible within the city of Newburgh. And Nick did a, lo did a lot of financial modeling at that point. That was where we really started to look at the numbers. Um, we then moved into August of 2020 and the city council established the Newburgh Urban Renewal Agency. And at that time that they declared that there were blight conditions that existed and those blight conditions related to public infrastructure, transportation, sewer, water, and storm drainage improvements. And then as I always like to say, then I went on vacation and then I came back. <laughs> and so we re-picked up the project in October of 2020. Um, and where we were at when we presented to you um, in uh, June of, of 2020, the committee had met eight times. So they've now met 11 times. And the other three meetings came from the revisions and I'll get to that later. We continued our public engagement process. We continued to brief the council and the planning commission on the status of the plan and the report. We continued to inform and provide the information to our taxing districts as we were going through the process. And so we reached the point in August of 2020 and the city council held a public hearing and took public comments on the proposed urban renewal plan. At that time, uh, the plan was identifying lands to be included in the district that were outside the city, but within the urban growth boundary. And that required Yamhill County to approve the plan. And we had to determine if the plan was in conformance with their comprehensive plan. The city council continued the second reading of that ordinance until October of 2020. Uh, in the meantime, we had conversations with the council uh, because the county had identified that the plan needed, required that it needed to go to a vote. The city council ultimately provided direction and guidance to, count, uh, to staff 
to say, um, let's revise the plan. Let's remove the lands that are outside of the city limits of Newburgh. At the same time, we were in the process of annexing lands uh, within the proposed district into the city of Newburgh. And that was some properties that were uh, south of 14th Street, uh, the mill site and the ODOT bypass. So with that, with the revisions, uh, our urban renewal proposed boundary has shrunk. It's now down to 540 acres, uh, which is about 50 acres less than it was in the proposal that we presented back in June. So the committee um, had broken the area up into areas A through H uh, to help them understand the importance and relevance of the infrastructure in order to encourage uh, new industrial development and housing and commercial development to occur. So with Nick's modeling and forecasting, uh, the new proposal is for a maximum indebtedness of $125.8 million. It does include the downtown area, which is at the top of this map in blue. It has the two connecting roadways and or areas between the downtown and the riverfront area. And so that's River Street and Blaine Street. And as I mentioned that we did do uh, annexations of property. So we annexed a bunch of area, five properties down here along the river, uh, which included two city owned properties, the Baker Rock property and the Stone Bank property. We have annexed the mill site um, here and there were significant portions of the bypass actually that were not within the city limits and we worked with ODOT and they uh, agreed and we processed and annexed those properties and so all the annexations were essentially completed by the end of 2021. Always important to note and to remind everyone that urban renewal does not increase your property taxes it's a redistribution of the taxes that are already being paid. So now I'm going to kind of walk through the different sub areas so you can have an understanding of the infrastructure that the committee had identified. So this is the mill site, which is under demolition. It's, much of it is gone. Uh, we're down to the paper machine building and uh, they're rapidly going through that. And it's anticipated that all of the structures and the concrete pads and so forth will be removed by June or towards the end of June of 2022. So the plan identifies a new roadway, the east-west that comes back and connects with what we call the bluff road. The bluff road follows the top of the bank and then comes down and connects with Dog Ridge Road. And then we've got improvements to Dog Ridge Road. And then we have improvements to Wynuski. It's important to know that underneath these particular roadways, we have the infrastructure that you don't see. That's the storm water, the wastewater, and the water lines. We also have the Esplanade Trail that comes from River Street and comes over to what we call the Waterline Bridge, which is the old Highway 219 bridge. And that was something that was identified by the community when we were uh, putting together the riverfront plan is to have that opportunity to be able to get out and recreate and walk and take advantage of those view corridors of French Prairie across or to on the south side of the river. Sub area B is south of the bypass and west of River Street. And so in this one, there are improvements to River Street. Uh, there's a rail crossing improvement that needs to occur based on conversations with Oregon Department of Transportation and the rail division. There's improvements to 14th Street between College and River Street. There's the bypass trail that works through here. And so we have been coordinating with CPRD on the overall bypass trail. And then there's the Western extension of the Esplanade that comes from River Street and comes over and connects back up to what's uh, known as North, uh, Northeast Waterfront Street. Water Street. Next is sub area C and D. So on the left is C. And this is for wastewater improvements. And so down in this general area, we're looking at a new wastewater lift station. 
And this line would be a force main. It would take you back to a point where it can reach gravity to flow back to the wastewater treatment plant. And these would be new gravity lines that would come into that wastewater lift station. What's important to note is that when you, the previous slide, when we're looking at area B, there are significant portions of area B that actually the wastewater has to go back and underneath the bypass to get to that lift station uh, based upon topography. On the right hand side is sub area D. And D is between the railroad tracks and River Street and Ninth Street. So in the plan is an extension of Blaine Street that would come down and parallel the railroad tracks uh, because this property chose not to annex. We stopped and we remodeled and costed. The final 600 feet or so of that roadway would be dealt with through other funding sources. Uh, there are improvements to College Street for transportation, sewer water, and storm water. There are railroad crossing improvements that need to occur where college crosses. And then there are pedestrian improvements along 9th Street. Um, there are missing sidewalk components. There's no ADA ramps in many locations. And of course, we have just to the north of this, just off this map is Edwards Elementary. And so we have a lot of students that do walk to work and the committee thought that that was important to have that project. Then we moved to areas E and F. So E is to the east of River Street over to Wynuski. The only project here, and you'll see a continual theme, is improvements to River Street. And these improvements will go from uh, essentially 14th Street to 1st Street. So they are transportation, water, wastewater, and stormwater improvements. So area F is the continuation of that, um, <clears throat> bringing us up basically to 3rd Street, 2nd Street, 2nd and 3rd Street. The next slide is area G, which is on Blaine Street. And so the area that's over here, basically to the west, is zoned for high density residential. So there's infill and redevelopment opportunities that exist. But we do not have the infrastructure to be able to support that. Uh, through a separate program, through House Bill 2001 on middle housing, we identified that the residential area south of downtown had about $6.5 million worth of water line improvements that were necessary in order to accommodate uh, development and infill development. So the Blaine Street piece in area G, again, is transportation, water, wastewater, and stormwater improvements. The last area is H, which is the downtown area. And so the yellow line is basically a, a cloud that says within somewhere within that boundary would be two new public parking lots. And that was identified from businesses in, in the downtown area as a need. Where you see the blue lines that are here mostly running north south, those are water line upgrades. Uh, the water lines that we have in the downtown, the oldest part of Newburgh essentially, is that we have undersized water lines. And so the vacant lots that you may see and or redevelopment along Second Street and so forth is that we do not have the right size of pipes to, to carry the fire flow to be able to get that vertical mixed use uh, opportunities that would occur. We have <clears throat> two traffic signals identified, one at Hancock and Blaine, the other first in Blaine. And this is based upon volumes because we have two primary three primary entrance points into the riverfront area. That's Blaine Street, that's River Street, and then Wynuski. Um, the other piece is identified is an intersection improvement at Hancock and College Street. And the committee identified a partial funding for that particular improvement and other funds would need to be identified and acquired to complete <clears throat> that. Um, the last piece of this, oh, two last pieces of this, Second Street, you've heard me mention a couple of times about redevelopment and infill opportunities. Um, and this is undergrounding overhead utility lines, uh, conversations with Twalton Valley Fire and Rescue to get the vertical housing that we envision. Because we can't do that because the power lines and other utility lines are in the way. And then the last piece of this is the road diet along First Street and Hancock Street. And that's creating the wider pedestrian sidewalks So the impact to Shehalem Park and Recreation District. So 
So we always note when we're giving these presentations that urban renewal spurs this new development that occur because it's infrastructure focused. Um, the life of this plan over 30 years would be a foregone revenue of a little over $9 million uh, to the park district. It does not reduce your existing revenues. So the park district would continue to collect their proportional share of the frozen base and the county assessor would establish that frozen base. This is what's in the material that we had sent uh, to Don and it's a table showing an estimate on each year about what those foregone revenues would be. So it starts out small uh, at 17,000 in the first year, fiscal year ending 2024, and increases over time as you get into the outward years, um, you know, starting in, you know, 2045 and so forth. And that increases, but that total amount is that 9.1. Um, the committee spent a lot of time talking about duration of the plan, so it did not go on. And so there is embedded in the plan itself um, uh, 30 years. And so the program would terminate after 30 years. That essentially means, and it's kind of a toggle back and forth, is in about year 25 would be about the last year we would issue any debt uh, and construct any final projects. And when we get to the end of that uh, 30 years is that the urban renewal program terminates and then all of the assessed value goes back on the tax rolls and the county will county assessor will calculate all of that. The other component of that was uh, kind of a checks and balances. And so that every five years, starting with the first year of tax increment collection, is that five years later, there would be a review of the plan. And that review would look at are we on target? Where are we at with the forecasting projections? Uh, what kind of projects have occurred? And in that process, we would continue to consult and confer with all of the taxing districts and share that information. In the end, it would end up as a report that would go to the new uh, Newburgh Urban Renewal Agency. So before I get to the question component of this, so on December 10th, uh, we did send out by certified mail to all of the taxing districts, a copy of the plan and the accompanying report uh, with a multi-page memo. Um, that started the 45 day consult and confer process. That process ends on March 28th of 2022. Any comments that are received from any of the taxing districts will be forwarded on to the city council. And the city council will consider those in their hearing that they have tentatively scheduled for April 4th of 2022. So at that point, I will turn it back over to the board. Anybody have questions for Doug? And the parkland development, that's part of this urban renewal, correct? And the money to build those parks is part of the urban renewal? It, building the parks is not. The Esplanade Trail is part of the urban renewal program, uh, but acquiring land for park improvements and or those soft trails and so forth that were identified in the master plan, uh, the committee did not recommend and is not included as a funding uh, project within the urban renewal plan. Well, when you said acquiring the land, meaning that well, there's, all, there's ongoing conversations about what do we do with the old landfill? And so there have been conversations between CPRD and Yam Hill County about a possible transfer of ownership of that. Um, in this urban renewal plan, we have not identified, the committee did not identify of participating in the acquisition of any additional land for parks. But they did identify the bypass trail or segments of the bypass trail. So in the one slide in sub area B, the uh, portion of the bypass trail from along River Street and then along the north side of 14th Street is a project that's identified in the plan to be funded. Did they get, oh, sorry. Why was the county land dropped? Um, the county chose not to annex their property. 
So after uh, many months of discussions with them about uh, annexing, so the city took the position with the property owners after we adopted the riverfront plan, if property owners wanted to annex, the city would process those applications. We would not require them to apply, pay a fee, is that the city would take on that role. And so we talked with all of the property owners that were outside of the city limits at that time. The county chose not to. West Rock for Rogers Landing chose not to. Uh, one property to the, the west of the landfill chose not to. There was one island property on Waterfront Street who chose not to. There were two properties along College Street that chose not to. And then the last property that chose not to annex was on Wynuski Street. Then there was the issue, the city was working with West Rock to acquire property for expansion of our water treatment plant. Uh, timing wise is that that um, land transaction did not coincide with the timing of the urban renewal plan. Uh, we are looking at annexing that property that the city has recently acquired. And there could be a future expansion of the urban renewal area to encompass approximately two acres of land to include that within the urban renewal district. But that would be a decision that would have to be made at a future date. So the reduction in the acreage was that primarily those properties that decided not to annex themselves in? That is correct. Since you're working with us on the bypass trail, looking at your total urban renewal plan and all the different factions of it, how quickly can that part or how, what, is there a timeline for the different parcels to be completed? Or is just kind of like, how does that work? So I'll let Nick answer part of this because he did the financial modeling. Um, so um, Nick and his team did a modeling looking at the timing of projects. And so city staff provided to our consultant team what we anticipated was a timeline of when particular improvements would occur. The committee had established a hierarchy. The hierarchy was first industrial land and getting the infrastructure in place to attract new industrial development and create new jobs. And part of that was predicated on the fact when the mill closed, we lost over 200 jobs at an average annual wage of about $80,000 a year. So that was their first priority. Their second priority was on commercial land. And so there is some commercial in the riverfront area. And of course the downtown is commercial. Then it was the mixed commercial component where you could have ground floor retail and residential above. Then they went to high density residential development as we all know within Newburgh, uh, housing cost is a challenge and we do have a constrained land supply. The lowest priority that the committee had identified was any infrastructure that would serve residential development. So that detached single family. So that's the hierarchy that the committee established and worked forward with. So with, with this proposal is that we have identified that there are improvements as part of the bypass trail uh, along River Street and on 14th Street. So I have had conversations with Don about that and the timing of when that might occur. So our first year of revenue is anticipated to come in fiscal year ending 2024, which would be roughly around $250,000. There's still the opportunity to have conversations with the park district about the potential for some reimbursement. So uh, the district has received a grant uh, for that bypass trail and Don and I would need to continue to have conversation. Is there an opportunity somewhere in the future that urban renewal might be able to reimburse for those portions of the trail that are along River Street uh, coming down to the intersection of 14th? The urban renewal program is looking at building that section of the trail between River Street and, and College Street but again, it's a timing issue. And part of that timing plays into when will the property owner want to ha openly have uh, discussions about potentially selling that land to a developer for an apartment and a mixed commercial development opportunity. And right now they're focusing on the industrial side, which would be to the east of River Street. And Doug, I'd add a couple of points to that. Um, 
the timing of projects that are included in the urban renewal plan are non-binding. So every year the urban renewal agency will adopt a budget and through that budget process, it will look at the actual funds available and decide which projects to receive funding that next year. So um, there's no guarantees in urban renewal. It's a 30 year forecast of how property taxes will increase over time. And so we make our best guesses for when projects might be available for funding, but ultimately it'll be an annual budget uh, decision-making process. Um, that being said, there are uh, several trail project components in the plan, and they are spread out in the proposal here to receive funding anywhere from that, that very first year, 2024-25 uh, uh, fiscal year, I think, um, through the, the next decade and a half. Um, so this is a 30 year plan and a lot of these uh, trail improvements are occurring are estimated to occur in the front half of this um, life of this urban renewal area. A major unknown for this area is when the uh, West Rock site will develop and how much value will be brought online when that happens. And so we've made estimates of gradual growth over time in the area. But there are uh, industrial developers that are interested right now and are talking to Doug about potential projects there. And who knows if any of them will come to fruition. But if and when that site develops um, with the potential for over a million square feet of new construction, potentially very um, valuable machinery and equipment value on site as well, that will drastically reshape the projected tax revenues here. And if and when that new construction takes place, um, it could really accelerate the timing of when a lot of projects can receive funding compared to what has been proposed um, in this plan document itself. If that happens and you end up pushing your timeline forward, it, is the 30 year like solid or can that be shrunk down too if you're moving faster than you anticipate. It can be, it can be reduced. Um, so as an example, in the modeling that we've done, we're looking at somewhere between 1.2 and 1.5 million square feet of new industrial development to occur on the mill site to the west of River Street. If that development occurs sooner and we're generating more tax increment revenue, we can get to our maximum indebtedness amount quicker or in a shorter time period than 30 years. And so the driver on this is the governor is no more than 30 years, but if we can get to our maximum indebtedness before 30 years, then we would terminate the plan. Any other questions? Do you need anything from us at this point? Not this evening. So this was just a presentation. Uh, we have sent to Don uh, all of the documents. So the plan and the accompanying report. And so again, uh, the district has the opportunity to provide comments by March 28th back to the city. So those would come to me. I would include those comments then in a report that would go to the city council for their public hearing on April 4th for their consideration. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much for nice having you. us yeah. and have a good meeting. Thank you. You're welcome to stay if you want. <laughs> I'm going to go. I'm going to go have some dinner. <laughs> good idea. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. OK, next on our agenda is Bob Youngman. Bob. <clears throat> you mind if I stay seated? No. That's fine. I'd like to share with you regarding the West Side Trail situation. It concerns me a great deal. Um, I was born on a farm, our family family farm and the impact of the rail on our farm the people on the trail 
we had numerous people walking the trail, uh, walking the railroad lines, um, coming by our house, wanting food, uh, sleeping under the trees in the in the rail right away under the and making Hawaiian style shishi uh, where we had no idea where it was. Um, and so my concern is that that if if this trail were to continue, there would be a perpetuation of what we did, what we've gone, what we don't want to see again. And second part of it is that it was my pleasure to know the original founders of CPRD, the board. People like Art Moffat, people like Dale Hall, people like Tony Crater, people like Neva Crabtree. I knew them well as friends. I knew them well enough that, that they would, if they were in your position tonight, they would say, no politics for CPRD. Keep politics out of it. They had their own personal and political viewpoints, but they didn't allow those to uh, extend into their function where you folks are sitting. So that's my concern. Stay out of politics. You're not in the business of politics. You're in the business of bringing our community uh, together, bringing our families together, um, operating a fantastic fitness center and aquatic center, which is my next stop tonight. <laughs> and, and so that's my hope is that that you will keep politics, keep the trail idea out of CPRD and continue to focus on what you do well. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Does anybody have questions for Bob? No. Thank you, Bob. All right, are there other people that are not on the agenda that would like to speak this evening? Yes, sir. Uh, Please greetings. state your name. <laughs> uh, greetings, I'm Rick Rogers. Um, I actually have an invite for you. Um, the Mayor's Prayer of Breakfast, uh, Jim, I know you've already responded. The Mayor's Prayer of Breakfast is going to be April 2nd at the Cultural Center at 8.30 in the morning. Thank you, Rick. So if you, uh, and the breakfast is on me. So if I hear a couple of um, The breakfast <laughs> is on me for all you elected. So uh, if you'd like to come, please do. The theme this year is uh, gather, inspire, and pray. Uh, the fact that we can gather, first off, is going to be good, seeing as it's been a while. Right? Uh, I think we can all use some inspiration right about now. Um, and prayer is always good for all. So there you go. So that's, uh, that's what I have, my invitation. Uh, please, if you'd like to come, just let me know, and we'll make sure you're, you're there. Uh, and that goes for staff, too. If you all would like to come, please do. So again, April 2nd. Um, the other thing I have is... I assume you heard about the decision regarding ARPA last night. So you all were on the call. So first, I'm sorry about the trail money first. Um, I was a little surprised, as you saw. I tried to see if we could um, fund lesser than the amounts that were asked. Really, my, my strategy there was to try to get all of the fund projects funded, but that didn't go. It didn't fly with the committee. So um, we're going to have, and I don't know, have you talked to anybody from city yet today about, OK. So the next round for ARPA will be April 30th, or May 3rd, March 30th. Um, we will be taking applications in again that if you wanted to come back for the trail, um, you could do that. The, the thing is we're down to about just under a million dollars to disperse. So I don't know if that will impact how much you ask for, but I can also tell you we currently got 19 projects in the queue for this final round. So um, anyway, and I think you've got the, the Butler property in too, right? So. Um, know that, know that it's about 900,000, so anyway, that's what I got, otherwise. Yes, sir. It's so nice to have the mayor at our meeting, I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> not sure. I am, but I do have one question on, 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 the, on the money for that, those funds. Yeah. Because the city provided us with a letter that they would help support 
financially mm -hmm. the bypass trail. So my assumption is, is that we would be able to, you know, have a little higher um, how do I put this uh, standing in those funds because I mean you gave us the letter and, and Don yeah. correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so I'm asking you to basically, you know, when you gave that to us, we thought, okay, mm -hmm. you know, 1.7 million or whatever's going to be put up by ODOT for that trail. The city's going to put up 400,000. Mm -hmm. That's great. So, you know, that's what we were hoping. Yeah, um, I'll be honest with you. I was surprised that it, that it didn't get funded. Be honest. Do um, they know that there is a letter from the city saying that? I do. Um, it would be good for them the next round to know that. I don't believe that was mentioned last night. So I, I actually did. I did mention. Did you? That. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But there, it may be that that, that funds will come from another source. That if you could it. check on that and help us with that, we yeah, really appreciate. Sure. I'll, I'll see. I'll see that. I mean, again, like I said, I talked to Will, the interim city manager, this morning. He too was surprised that it wasn't funded. So, but you know, it's it's fourteen people that that make the decision. I'm sure it's a competitive deal. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know. Free money is always in great demand. So there you go. Uh, but yes, I will. I'll follow up with uh, with with Will. And before you go, just to the board, we made a presentation about the care site, and uh, just so that you know, we've already contacted GFU and DCI, Good. and meetings are being set up, and uh, we will let you know. Uh, when all that comes in. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I saw that Tim was hoping that uh, a couple of representatives from the city would would attend that initial meeting if you want. So we're happy to we're happy to do that if we can we can help. Uh, the other one is, did you see the the thing on Tiger Manufacturing? Yeah. Did you see that? I called. We. Oh, did you talk yeah. about Alvin? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Because that that's a bummer for that program that they're you know during construction. So that's a that's a real cool program. So hopefully we can find a home for it for the our little construction tanks. We jumped on that, I think, pretty quick. Did you? Oh, okay. I had, I had actually talked to him. Oh, had you? Julie. Uh, Marshall. Can you fill us in on what you're talking about? I'm not sure what, the, what you're yeah. talking about. Oh. Oh, so you want, okay, so Tiger Manufacturing, um, so Alvin Elbert from Air. I know Alvin, yeah, we got it. So it's the machine shop mm -hmm. at the school. So um, and it's it's because it's a business now. It's it's really very very cool. So the kids are doing machining and selling these parts as a way to keep the program going. And so it was started by Alvin. Um, you know, part of his vested interest was to try to find people interested in machining so that he could hire kids. Right, that was part of it. Uh, but now it's become this business, quite successful. Um, and it's also been a launching pad for kids going off to to engineering school and things like that. So it's mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty cool. So, uh, but with the construction, they're not going to be able to. To house it where it is now, so they're trying to find a home for it for, for as long as construction. Cool. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, Rick, the city had uh, previously approached the council about working on a trail from uh, the park at River Street and uh, and 99W up to the um, at the Hoover Park there, up to the water treatment plant and. Uh, the idea was they could use it to better access for their facility as well. And that, you know, was now that we're doing the, the bypass trail, that's, that seems like an appropriate time to consider that connection since we're already doing work in that area. And I just, I know there's new city manager and some new counselors now, but if you could bring that subject up again. Isn't that, isn't that part of the urban renewal though? It's, it's river down to the water treatment plant. Is that this is the first time? Uh, yeah, along so Hess Creek. It's, it's, the, it's, oh. it's, it's, the, it's, it's basically the sewer system right. goes along Hess Creek, yeah, and the mean, city wants to be able to have ability to get in there to repair yeah, so the sewer. So right, right. It would be a you know be a great connection, purposes. especially as we're working on you know your your downtown. Uh, I mean your riverfront improvement plan uh, right. that you know. You just the River Street and Blaine, yeah, you know, right. but yeah. it's another connection that just kind of helps tie the downtown to the waterfront area. Yeah, oh, now I recall because we're moving the sewer lines out of the street. That's 
what it is. It's not similar to what we do. Okay, got it. I'll, I'll try to chase that. And see what that the right of ways were there, and we were going to utilize that for the pathway. Okay. And uh, that was uh, to tie into that new part that's back there. And then it was going to tie into uh, the current where the new bridge is being and then tie in and go over uh, the bypass, the Wanuski bypass, gotcha. and then tie in down and go to the new property on 219. Okay, the bypass train. Um, yeah, I'll check, I'll check on it because wasn't the university, isn't the university working on their section of that trail too? Is that the same? Yeah, that's okay. correct. Yeah, yeah, we've okay. had a good relationship with them uh, being a private college of course they want to retain ownership and make sure they're able to patrol it and stuff so yeah well back to the university i'm excited that that talk is going on because when they started talking about back to child care when they started talking about using their education students to help provide the child care as a you know as a class or whatever it might be I thought that was brilliant. I mean, that's just really, really cool potentially. So, right. Yeah. Oh, the other one other announcement. Sorry, I don't want to take too much of your time. One other announcement. If any of you don't have enough meetings, right, <laughs> uh, we're looking for somebody who lives in District Four to serve on the City Council. Yeah. We've got a vacancy. So, if you're interested and you live in District Four, which is I roughly do. Crestview across to Hess Creek, north of um, Mountain View. So, there you go. All right, and it's only a term until the end of the year, and then you can decide whether you want to run permanently. So there you go. All right. Other than that, thank you, folks. Thank and you, thanks Rick. for all that you do. Thanks, Rick. Thanks for you, what you do, buddy. Yeah, nothing but fun, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Aloha Nui. All righty. Next on the agenda are action items and committee reports. Um, first up is the personnel handbook of people. Uh, others on the agenda. Was there other people oh, that wanted that right? to speak? No, not to me. And you're coming with me. Okay. Um, on action items, just the handbook approval. Okay. Uh, Jim, you may want to discuss what you and Heidi did. It was wonderful reading. <laughs> Have you ever get a chance to read the employee handbook? It's exciting. It's an exciting novel. Anyway, um, it's a shame that uh, so many that you know I looked at it and um, you know I look at, at full time and part time employees, and when you know the full time employees get a certain amount of benefits, get a certain, have a certain amount of things, and then the part time employees don't. There's all intertwined in there, so I said it'd be great to be able to separate those a little bit. So when a teenager comes in and reads this thing, they can. Not have to go through all the legal aids and stuff like that, but um, I guess our legal folks said you need to do it this way. Otherwise, workman's compensation is one of the big things that comes up in any agency that wasn't involved in the manual, and the lawyer said leave it out. That's a separate thing. So I brought those things up, and I don't think there needed to be a board. I mean, we can approve it, but I didn't know if there had to be a motion to approve it because it's a the the the. The booklet is is liquid. Right, it moves all the time. Yeah, but so, I, at, at our office, like we have our board periodically approve the handbook, especially specific changes that have been made. Which I think that there has been quite a few that have been made to the handbook over the last couple of years, right? Exactly. So I think it'd be good that it, it is a board approved right. personal handbook. So I would entertain a motion. <laughs> okay, then I will. Second. No, second that. You'll no, make you're motion. making the motion. I'll make a motion to <laughs> improve the uh, approve the employee handbook with the understanding that when major changes are made, it will come back and take. I will second that motion. All right. And first and second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Just to let the board know. The only changes we make is those that are mandated by law, really, and we'll inform you of that, but really we we have no choice in those 
endeavors when the law changes. Right. Any reports or comments from board members? Let's start with you, Bert. Uh, I don't have anything to report. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, today um, I, I said I need to go up and, because I haven't been up there for a while, to the um, Bob and Crystal Valley property. And I was uh, pleased to see the trail system up there. I thought, even though the rains have, you know, are there, it really hadn't affected the structure of the trail, on the mud at least, and it wasn't, to tell you too, it wasn't really that muddy. So here we get a chance to go up there and walk. It'd be great, but because I hadn't walked the trails before up there, and, uh, it would be good to have a little bit of signage, so I don't end up somewhere I shouldn't. So <laughs> maybe with some mileage stuff. So just a, just an idea down the road, you might want to put that up there. But uh, I think it was great. I think the rest did a great job. Sure. We can ask the trails committee to recommend some signage up there. That'd be great. I mean, it's, it's Thank just, you. Uh, it was really serene, and there was somebody else walking up there. When I was up there today. And where, where can you park now? Is there a, just a, park a residence? The house. Okay. And then just go kind of over the right and trail starts down there. The trail to the left, too. I mean, it's really nice. Every time I'm up there, there's at least one, if not more, out there on the trail. Uh, it's used quite a bit. And then if you go down to where the horse trails are, the equestrian, there are equestrian people constantly using those trails with their horses. The only thing that might be beyond our abilities right now is to maybe look at that horse a little bit and maybe do some proper thinning and cleaning on the forest. Not that we don't, I mean, the forest fires in Oregon are really prevalent and uh, there's some fuel down there. So, just something to think about. I'm not saying right now, but down the line, we might need to have the forest to go through there and look and say, we need to thin out so some of our trees can grow well. So far. We're looking at some programming up there for adults and for kids now that COVID has settled down a little bit. We're kind of excited about that. Now really that nice. we can gather and I mean, it's a great place. So I, I actually um, just wanted to comment on not having that um, request for ARPA funds approved. And I and I don't I think that this the CPRD has done almost too good a job at what you do. That I think part of what happens is that they don't think we it's like, oh don't worry, CPRD will figure it out anyway, because that's what's happened over the time. And I don't know if um if if we have to try to maybe do a better job of saying you know uh, we are doing a really good job and it is all for the benefit of the community and somehow or another get that prioritized in a way that allows for us to start getting some money from folks because i feel like cprd gives to every other taxing district and doesn't get anything back or it gets very little back from any other taxing district. And um, and I think that's because you guys have done such a phenomenal job. So I, a, I applaud you, but B, I think we need to, to get some messaging somewhere that's going to try to even that playing field a little bit better. You know, I mean, we, we, we build playgrounds for all the schools. We support the city by taking care of their parks for them. And we ask for some stuff back and it's like, eh, you don't need it. And I, I don't think that's okay, personally. And I think there has to be a better, um, you know, just just give and take amongst all the, the taxing entities. And, and I don't know, maybe that's just a conversation with them and saying, this is not okay. Um, we're kind of tired of being well men on the totem pole here. So I, I just, I, I was super disappointed that it didn't get approved because I think we've worked hard and you've gotten other resources to to do parts of the trail and this would have been really helpful so it's just something I think we should probably think about um, in the we we will resubmit and I've been told by a few people 
that they will speak up, that uh, they should have spoke up at this last one. But to be honest, they said, we didn't think it wouldn't be funded. And uh, hmm. But so, it's not just this particular instance. I mean, this instance is just another instance of yeah. where we're not getting anywhere, you know? Yeah. Um, so I, I, I don't want you to stop doing the good work you're doing because I personally enjoy all of the the parks and the recreation that you guys provide for all of us. So um, I think it's a really good thing. I just think we need to show people that just because we do a good job doesn't mean that we don't need the resources to. Okay. All righty. Uh, update on projects. What about you, Casey? <laughs> um, yeah, I was, top of my list was, yeah, we didn't receive the ARPA grant. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, um, we are still working on the bypass trail. Uh, they took a little bit of a break because they had to get the geodex back in to find a way around a big sawdust pile that they not even had issues back when they were doing the bypass. Um, but they did find a location and they have, I think the bridge extent got extended another 50 feet, but it was down to 450, so we're back up to five. And they have a location now, so we're planning to submit uh, free up, go to the city for a free up of meeting on what we need to do to get through there, get all the permits in line. And I believe it's about that, 20 20 percent design right now the bridge itself and we're going to be talking with uh, Carrie Martin from ODOT Rail Crossing on tomorrow I um, have a meeting with her at three o'clock she actually lives in Newburgh but I think we do this meeting so mm -hmm. that's where that's at um as you know, uh, Dundee is getting a new city manager. Her name's uh, Stephen Ball, so I'll be looking forward to meeting with him and talking about the center property development uh, while it's gone. Um, we kind of held back getting too involved with Rob because he's going to leave notes for Steve and walk away, for sure. Um, and then uh, you all know that Newburgh School District bought some property in Dundee for the new elementary school on um, Edwards and Creed Street. Uh, we took a ride over there the other day uh, talking about the kayak launch and some other things that could happen as a result of some of that. So um, things are moving forward in Dundee. Uh, as Cap uh, mentioned, the Cultural Center received that 250000 and uh, we're actually slated for a meeting with um, the architects uh, Friday, March 4th. We're going to do a walkthrough of the upstairs. Uh, you're invited if you want to come it's from 1.30 to 3 on Friday, 4th. Uh, we'll talk about renovations and the theater and the staircase that was proposed and the entryway and that kind of thing. <coughs> what else? Still don't have a confirmed date for the Shigeon Aquatic and Fitness Center, um, but it's got to be coming soon. Uh, and the last thing, I guess I gotta ask for permission. <laughs> um, Forgiveness or permission? Um, <laughs> well, Paula Grimace has asked for a traffic impact study on the Heritage Campground property, and multiple that's down there fiddling away with their bypass phase 2A. And that's the turnarounds and things. They're probably doing a lot of traffic studies, and they may actually be widening, widening the road is up to that point. 
So it might be a good opportunity for us to get on the bandwagon and get some things because the, the county's going to require it if we go and make an application for the, for the land use. We're going to need this traffic study done. Uh, and it fulfills a requirement for, I think it's a, what is it? Um, you know, transportation planning rule for the zone change or comprehensive plan amendment. So it's a good opportunity for us. Uh, it's three phased approach. The first phase is uh, meetings with ODOT and the county and ourselves and the development group and then, uh, talking about what needs to happen. And the second stage is actually the traffic impact study, which basically equates for them to measure all traffic flow at you know peak use times and that kind of thing. And then the third is um, to help us uh, with our, I guess, our outreach and talking to the county about what needs to be done in ODOT. And first phase was $4,500. That's more or less just a outreach to the county and ODOT. Second phase was $10,000. And the third phase, they're just gonna do it on a time and materials. And it's based on the number of meetings. And uh, I guess, uh, Things that they have to prepare for so that all of them are you going to do a like not to exceed contract uh, on that time of material? It doesn't really give a figure, it's time of materials. So they don't know what that's going to be until they get to that stage. So I could ask them for a more of a, a, a hard figure. Yeah, it's just sometimes time and materials. Yeah, it, yeah. it just it's so over. Well, it's gonna, it's gonna no. take it's gonna take them a few months to just do the first the first two phases, mm -hmm. and I do have to contact them about some uh, just some uh, typing errors. And we don't our main office is at 1802 Hallward Street, and that type <laughs> of thing, which everything goes to. <laughs> you, you wouldn't believe how many times I've had to change that address. So why will the traffic impact study take that long? Uh, because you have to outreach to different to ODOT and the county and uh, a lot of different entities. To get approval to do one or for what? No, not to get approval, just to see what's going to be required for ingress and egress out of that campground and to know what the actual numbers are because they're we already know they're going to require uh what is a cell lane and an axel lane out of there and no dots already i know they're going to have to do double lanes but we don't know how far that way and we might be able to just piggyback on what they do okay are you talking about coming directly off 219 or off of the road? That, the, yeah, the access road. Access, the access road. road. Okay. The other the other option for us was to buy a bunch of properties and run a road down alongside the 219. That would be expensive. Um, okay. I think they call that eminent domain, don't they, Don? Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't work. We don't, we don't well. call it that, though. We call it just don't want to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay away. That would not be a good idea. No. I have a question for you, Casey. On, on the Sanders property, mm -hmm. I just I just hope that um, we can move fairly quickly on that. I understand so the whole yeah, because of Jan. Mm -hmm. That's my main thing is that she donated that she wants to see it as a part of she wants to see it done when it started. I, I understand the road bumps but i don't know does the city council understand she donated that and she's been a citizen of dundee for i don't know how many 90 years father moved there in the 18th, right like 
100%. So anyway, that's my feeling about it. But she's just a great lady, and, and I really respect her enough to see that taken care of. Good luck. Yes. Uh, curious, Casey, if you have an update for us on the uh, uh, project to do the bridge across the Halem Creek. No, I didn't mention that, did I? <laughs> Well, our meeting with the county didn't go as well as we anticipated. Um, uh, we held the pre-op meeting with the county and their response was in unanticipated. Ken Friday said that we could submit the land use application, but it would be denied and we'd have to appeal the county's decision. What? I'm sorry, what? what? This is straight from Ken's mouth. Uh, trail, our understanding, and according to Oregon's land use laws, AF10 zoning permits parks in open space. Our understanding and our interpretation is trails and trail facilities, such as pedestrian bridges, are part of most parks and open spaces. So we're not sure why Ken said that they're not allowed. We will be submitting the land use moving forward. And if they deny it, we'll appeal it. He says there are some things going on in the county that I don't think are right. Is is the property it, in the it county? It has to do we? with the trail system and the bridge that was gonna be built. I tried to talk to Ken and I said, Ken, we're not talking about farm property here. He said, Don, I, my hands are tied. The county commission said, no, there's nothing I can do about it. I, I don't understand it. I think it's wrong. I don't believe, I don't know, but I don't believe the county commissioners <clears throat> would deny this if we take it to them if, i don't think they would if we could uh, but he's trying to say his hands are tied because they denied the counties and i said but that's totally different that's got to do with farming there is no farming here there's nothing around why would you deny it uh, he said well i all i can do is i will have to deny it and I don't understand why, but like Casey said, I, I said after the meeting, move forward with it, let him deny it, we'll take it to the county commissioners, and if they deny it, then we'll take it higher up. Why do we have to get county approval? Because it's county property. The city- Our lot is-, is The city, to. again, <laughs> we thought, that that part was annexed when they went in to annex it we gave them permission to annex the park they chose not to annex they used the stream rather than the property line yeah. why they did that i cannot tell you we were assuming that the park was in the city so not only do we have to have to Permits from the city, but to get permits from the county. Would it be better to just try to annex it uh, first? I've talked to Doug about that. He says it's a long, long, and expensive process. That bridge is access to the property that we own. It yes, has it nothing is. to do with a trail or any of that. Well, I know that. I would say that. that's out there. I, I, I totally agree with you but i'm telling you what we were told and we had the consultants here it's, they were amazed they yeah, felt it's that very disappointing it's it's, ridiculous. it's the worst kind of politics in my opinion and i agree with bob politics ought not to be involved in this but unfortunately it is why it is i don't know uh because the reality is expansion of our for the people to play disc golf exactly right. and, 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 and it's surrounded by homes but, and but isn't there some law top. that says if you have a landlocked piece of property you have to have some kind of access to it that may be I, the way we look at it but it's not landlocked it's on the corner 
the property behind there is all in the county. What what happened was is I said the city came to us. We they asked us to annex it. We went to the property owner. They could not annex into the city to build those homes without we annex. We went to the property owners and we said we will work with you but we want you to understand what our long-term plans are before we go would you agree that you would allow us to hook up and get a pathway through here at some point where we don't care we just know that the community needs to walk through here and the family said yes and to their credit they honored that when they sold that land, they made it clear what what it was, and, and it was a very good understanding. So the city says, well, we'll annex your property. Fine. But when they annexed it, like I said, they didn't annex the whole property. <laughs> they cut it off. Why they did that, cut I don't half. know. They cut it in half. I don't know why. I've asked that question, but this is the type of stuff you get into. And uh, we were just trying to be good neighbors and work with everyone and, and do it. And uh, then when this came up, we thought, well, there'll be no problem. We'll just work with the county. We'll go ahead and get it done. But because of the the trail, and I kept telling Ken, I said, Ken, this isn't the same thing. He said, Don, my hands are tied. That's what the commissioner said. I went back, I tried to get it changed. They wouldn't change it, and there's nothing I can do about it. It's based on their interpretation. Right. It's an interpretation and it, it, it's ridiculous. But I told the committee or the consultant, let's submit it. We'll go through it. And then if the county turns it, which they will deny it, he said he'd do it. So we'll have to go to the county commission. And so I came, sure. I came here in 1980 and we owned that land before that. So. It's just amazing, and it's landlocked, and it's for disc golf, and wow, that's just disappointing. Well, I, I, for I the see, public, I see yeah, you didn't exactly. do anything with it, Jim. Uh, well, I, 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 back in the day, you could do things a little differently. Now it's like you, you, you're in cough, you're in trouble. But anyway, we'll just keep working on it. We'll get it done. Thank you. Does anybody else have any more questions for Casey? Thanks for bringing that up. You're welcome. Thanks, Casey. All right, next on the agenda is the Pickleball Advisory Committee report. Well, I think I'm going to uh, get to it. Yes. Well, before we go to that, does, does anybody else have? Uh, okay. The staff reports come later. Okay. My uh, quickly, we submitted our uh, second uh, grant. Uh, this is to the M Hill County uh, ARPA grant. It's for a million dollars that was submitted today. Um, we will hear the uh, results from the OHA grant uh, by next week, the end of next week. And uh, should we be fortunate enough to receive money, that will come through this later. So that's just us. Yeah, bank account open just in case. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm going to go positive here. Don doesn't need that money, I know. So. <laughs> <laughs> we can use it for a <laughs> Hunter has done a great job. He he's really put forth a lot of effort and been very supportive and put a lot of time in. And I really appreciate it. We at CPRD really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah. That's why we get things done because yep. of people like that. Exactly. Not because of us. We just try not to stand in the way. Yeah. Can I ask a question regarding the last 
topic. Where is that land you're talking about that's landlocked? Is that at the end of uh, Yo Young Park? Yeah. It's at the bottom of the park. So it's right up against that ODOT land, but uh, across the creek. Yeah. Uh, yes and no. no. It's right on the north side of, or the west side of that new housing development. There, there's a map on the screen. Yeah, they used to call it Hoover Pool. Uh, and there, there's kind of a pool down there. You see the map? Yeah, I'm looking at the map. <coughs> The, there's that new development that's west of it, which is right. This is the part, and it's this land over here. Oh, okay. You know where the hidden metals is? It's okay. kind of yeah. between So it's the not creek. the southern end, it's that, that part. No, it's meadow. just right there. Right. It's that open meadow. The land line comes like this. Oh, the creek, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. further north, it's not accessible on uh, they all Dayton. Much taller, uh, no. <laughs> we do own a triangle on the other side, right next to Dayton Avenue. Yeah, <laughs> but that's not accessible either for the same reason. Okay, just just curious. Well, that's about as much as I can say about the pickleball stuff. And well, good luck. I we really hope. I, I do too. We hope nobody else submitted anything to OHA. Well, the first one had <laughs> someone less than four hundred applications. Uh, the one at Yamhill, uh, I don't know what the number is. My guess was probably 50 at least. 400 applications for how much money? Uh, grant total was over $30 million. Okay. Uh, the part that we were after is $8.55 million. We're requesting $4.15 million of that okay. for the capital project, which was kind of sketchy, but she says, well, listen to the story. The whole, the, uh, <laughs> If you I went through training on this and the question and answer period and all that, one thing was completely clear is that these people were so disorganized about getting the money out, they couldn't even answer questions that they had to rely on the audience to answer for them. So um, it's a crapshoot. Well, can't win if you don't apply. That's exactly. right. Yeah. You don't ask, exactly. you don't get it. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, thank, thank you, Hunter. Hunter. You're welcome. Is there a trails advisory committee report? Uh, well, the committee is mobilized itself into three groups, funding, outreach, and volunteer coordination. And uh, they're just be going, beginning to strategize. So they'll be meeting again here in another couple weeks and get more specific. So, you know, I'm just wondering on, on, on this, um, there's obviously a lot of pro and then there's obviously a lot of con to this, this whole thing. Um, there's a lot that we would have to understand before we could like approve or not approve because it's currently outside of our district, it goes all over the place. And, and I'm interested to understand um, how how that process actually is going to work. I mean, I, I would hate to have this trail advisory committee end up doing just just so much work um, when at the end of the day, like there's no way it can happen kind of a thing. So I don't know if there's anything in between that could happen so that we, we I don't know. I mean, I if are, it's a go, talking? it's great. If, if, are there phases to what's going to happen? Are you talking about the Yam Hill uh, trail? I, or I'm what? wondering which if one is. The most, I'm wondering if you're conflating the two. I might be. Yeah. So because um, we have a Trails Advisory Committee. Trails Advisory has Committee, two, right? Well, they're not be currently dealing on. That. So the board has directed them to come up with recommendations on any and all trails existing and proposed new within the district, Shehalem Heritage Trails comes overall, okay. that may or may not eventually include Yam Halas West Side the Trail, which was okay. proposed depending on, on the board's directive. Now they have been exposed to that uh, proposed trail concept. In fact, at their last meeting, they had a speaker who came in and they basically after 20 minutes had to uh, shut him down. Um, he was there probably likely at the at the behest of uh, Commissioner Ber Bershauser because she was in the audience at the time and followed up with an email the next day, which is why, why I say that. Um, so they have been exposed to it. They're learning about it, but they understand that that may or may not become a okay. part of our trail system. And they are Thank aware you. of the heritage trail 
Okay. They've been studying the master plan, the strategic plan. Okay. They're talking about existing trails that we have. They're requesting uh, to do lists. Uh, they're, they're requesting priority maintenance spots um, from Casey. Uh, they're learning about the bypass trail that, as we have proposed it, they're um, they're they're mobilizing for future uh, seeking letters of support for the the subsequent phases of the bypass trail, especially from Dundee direction, because we've asked them to do that because of phase two, we would be moving in into that area. And they've also come up with many of their own proposed trails and um, and and pet projects that they would like to do around here. So they, they have a lot of things that they're looking at doing, uh, but right now they, they're just getting their basic structure underway. Thank you. Wonderful. Any questions? To add to that, because um, I've been at the meetings, I sat through them, and, and I met with a few of the folks about the trail system. But the one thing that we've been working on was um, the Ewing Trail. I don't know how that has been, you know, spearheading that. And, and um, so um, the uh, Knibsons are excited about it. And so I need to get together with Casey because I got an email today and Don, you CC'd on everything, CC it. And Casey, I'll start CCing you on stuff too. Maybe you, yeah, you're shaking your head, no, okay. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, if we could go out, in case you don't necessarily have to be there, but if if um, if Russ could come out with us, and we could take a hard look at that north side and He's see building a greenhouse right now. Where and if that's still a little wet up to do, but they've given us permission and the people to talk to when we want to go out there. And then um, Don gave me permission to have um, John Bridges. So that's the legal. Um, process of using a trail by the public, and so David is going to reach out to him. So that's kind of where it's so it's exciting that that uh, they want to be able to provide a place for people to you know walk on, on their properties. Cool. And the good news about this is that where it sits, it connects to the Abbey. Oh. And the and Abbey already has a too, trail. Yeah. Yeah. And part of a member of the committee is trying to get with the Abbey and uh, let them know what we're doing and uh, go that way. That, that will be a long term type thing, but uh, that's a key area for us to hook into so that we get over. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, the baby steps. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a little, but it, but they're positive about it and that's 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 good. That is right. awesome. Yeah. Segments. Yeah. That's great. Thank you. Okie dokie. Superintendent's report. Uh in your board packet I put the uh, SDCs, as the board is aware, I was directed to increase those based on the resolution and the methodology. And on page 31, I gave you again in this board pack, and I will continue to do that so that it is public and at each one of our meetings. Uh, so that the public is aware and we will send this out to each jurisdiction. Uh, uh, when does that kick in? Again? That June, will be July 1. July 1. Thank you. Right. We send it out so that they know ahead of July 1. The reason for that is if they have a group that comes in they collect it, we kind of go with their whatever they suggest. Like sometimes there's an overlay of a couple of months and we just let them handle that. We've never been ticky on it. Uh, the city of Newburgh, city of Dundee and Yamhill County. And we've it's, already issued those reminders in written form. Right. <laughs> So, so Don, Don, in the in the future when you do those, I'd like to see 
the comparison with the existing year and the or or percentage of what the, I mean what would, I think your sheet showed the new rate that didn't talk about what that increase was. <laughs> that increase, I think in the last board packet, I put in there what the increase was this time I did. Yeah, well, I just but, think for communication for yeah, you know, just like it's be helpful to have that be Okay, I can restructure. Thank you. Total transparency. The the reason I did it the way that I did it was because we used to have the old one on there and they asked me to take it off mm -hmm. because they got confused. Sometimes the people collecting it didn't know which okay. one to collect, even though it said new or proposed. So I just simplified it for them. But uh, I, I know what you're talking about and I can do it. The, the only other thing that uh, uh, the audit, uh, thank goodness, the last I checked, we were second, I think, in the formation, nothing's changed. You got a copy of the draft, nothing changed, and um, we'll have that. So that's good news. The other thing is uh, with health insurance and stuff like that, uh, some of the health insurance are going up 11 and a half percent. I believe, again, that's the most that it can go up. That's if that's good news, I don't know what bad news is, but uh, it is possible because of where we're classified that ours will be zero as far as medical. Now, we will have an increase in uh, uh, things like uh, uh, vision and uh, also dental, there'll be slight increases. I think the most of that was 6%, but that's not a large amount. The other thing to make the board aware, the state legislature is constantly putting in new programs. When they put those new programs in, they don't pay for it, we do. For instance, with the Leave Act and stuff like that, it's 0 .004. They come up with a new act. It's going to be 0 .006. You add those two together, and you're talking about 1% that we have to pay. So uh, when you talk to the legislators, just remember, they make decisions for you. So you can kind of begin to request that they stop it. And uh, because they don't always go to uh, the organizations and ask. Uh, they have a hearing and the organizations are not even represented in a lot of instances. But uh, I just wanted you aware, those are some of the things in the personnel manual that becomes law that we have to put in right away. And there's a new one coming up. And off the top of my head, I can't remember what it was, but uh, it's a new one. It's family leave or one of those. And again, they don't even know. <laughs> They can't even tell us what the cost is going to be. They're basing it on the state of Washington. The state of Washington, their cost is 0 0.006. But again, we don't know what Oregon is going to be. 
it's going to be one of those costs that the employee pays part, which employees don't even know about it, and uh, the employer pays part. So uh, those are the type things that are coming out. And I just thought you should know, as we get closer and we know more, we'll give you the information. That's all that I've got. Okay, thank you, Don. Uh, shall we start with you, Jill? Yeah, is Kellen on the call? No. Okay, he, he was. He had a delivery of um, golf carts. The golf carts finally Ooh, came. So I saw that, yeah. Excited. Yeah, we're super excited about that. And, um, but, but he's busy out there. They're getting ready. They have, you know, their spring sports are kind of gearing up out there at the course. And they're starting to um, staff up a little bit out there. It's been a little cold out there this week. <laughs> Well, yeah, he's doing well out there. He was going to be on the call, but he was babysitting, or not, I shouldn't say babysitting, he was watching his kids. <laughs> um, well, on Saturday, we have the, we're excited, we have the family invasion at the father daughter dance. That will be at the armory. So, uh, Matt Compton is getting ready for that. We've had, I think, worked to about almost what's it, 90 participants, which is Kind of nice to see post COVID. Uh, we're gearing up also for the Camellia Run. Uh, Mayor Rogers is going to be uh, the starter for that race, so we're excited about that too. We're hoping to have about 500 uh, participants this year. That will be April 9th. Uh, let's see the Aquatic Center. We they've been busy, very busy. Um, we're seeing you know, members start to come back, which is nice. I, on my way here, the CDC, I think, is going to come out and they're going to lift the mask mandate on Friday. Um, but for the state of Oregon, the uh, so OHA has said uh, March 19th is the date that indoor activities can, um, yeah, resume without wearing. We can be in, the, in indoor indoor public places. You don't have to wear a mask. So that will be nice. We expect to see a lot of people uh, return and we're kind of tired of getting letters from people <laughs> fighting at both sides <laughs> one came through cat 71 last night at 9 30 so p.m so we're, we're looking forward to welcoming everyone back that would be very nice uh we've started a, a Tara and Wendy are doing a great job they started a babysitter class out there we're doing fencing classes the teams have uh, continued to practice the high school and, and college teams. The, uh, George Fox has had a meet every single weekend in January. So it's nice to see them. Comp pool is very busy. Club Polo is in the house. Uh, the CST Sharks continue to practice. And that's very nice. We have 90 kids on the wait list for swim lessons. Wow. So we're trying to get through all of those. Um, Staffing, you know, continues to be a problem. Uh, we are doing everything that we can. We are really working hard at trying to retain staff, but also find new staff. And at the Aquatic Center, Jim, you can attest to this, one of the problems is that our lifeguards and our staff are actually participating in their sport at this time. So that makes it a little bit harder. Their availability isn't as great. So Wendy has been guarding quite a bit and we're working through that. But it is with, I think all of our departments, we're, um, we're really working at trying to, you know, outreach to the community, outside of the community to, to, to find staff. Yes, sir? I did notice in your, in your report, and I do read your reports, you guys. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I did notice that uh, you were giving a discount to them on lifeguarding classes and stuff. So for you to know, I mean, it, I, I don't know what the cost is now, but for you to be able to be employed, you have to spend $200 or something like that ahead of time before yeah. you're even employed yeah. by the time they make that up. So that's something that 
you might want to look at to say, hey, you know, we may, and I can't, I'm not going to tell you how to do it budget wise or anything like that, but <laughs> you work a certain amount of time. You know, so we've actually that. waived that. And right now it's just $50, and that's basically pays for their first aid CPR certification. But even $50. Yes. Yeah. So not we, what McDonald's is going to charge you. Right. <laughs> right. And so Tara and I, Tara and I talked about that at length. And about I would say maybe two months ago, um, we made that change. And McMinnville is doing that. Woodburn is doing that as well. Uh -huh, yeah. uh, so anybody outside the district, I think they are still they still pay for it. But people that live in district aren't. And it's it's still been. Uh, a little challenging, but um, we did change that, and we'll continue to stay with that. When you can go to um, Hopper Murphy's and make seventeen ninety nine an hour, or I don't know if you know by Panda Express, but they have something out there that says you know, seventeen dollars an hour, seventeen fifty, and then management is a hundred thousand dollars a year. Isn't that crazy? So and that's especially when you're responsible for saving a life versus flipping exactly. a book. Exactly. Yeah. You get a sign yeah. on sign on bonus at Jay's. Thousand dollars. Yeah. And so that's our competition. You know, yeah. it's 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 been so we're trying to really we have staff meetings about it and we are working together, which is great because we're all in the same boat. Right. You know, our seasonal staff is we do the same pool of, of people in our community. And it's not just us, it's you know, as we reach out to other organizations, everyone's kind of going through that. So we're, we're still efforting that. We're still going to continue to work hard at that. Um, the coordinators are doing a great job. It's, anyway, we're, we're, we're still uh, continuing on with that. Um, let's see. Uh, pool parties have really actually kicked up. Uh, we've had a couple every single weekend, which is great. We have a, a Country Faith Christian Academy. They are running their PE classes um, at the gym. So that's kind of uh, nice to be able to offer that to them. They're doing that through the month of January, uh, February, and I think until the end of March. And then something unique that we're kind of doing is we started, uh, so Nike, we've been in contact with Nike, and they want to rent out the gymnasium uh, for a photo shoot. And that's the gym and the, the walking path and the weight room. And so we signed a contract with them for $2,000 to cool. kind of, and that kind of showcases the aquatic center too. So I hope that we continue to, to capitalize on those types of things. Cool. Let's see. So, uh, let's see, that's aquatics basketball. We currently have 615 uh, basketball players in town. And it's been tremendous. Uh, we have, it's called Little Tiger Basketball, so kindergarten, first and second. And then we have Junior Tiger, which is a recreational league. That's third through eighth. And then we have our travel teams. And so we've been fortunate to um, get through those seasons. We've had a little bit of COVID, but all the coaches have done a great job. That's a tremendous responsibility for a coach, you know, to, uh, to coach through a season like that. So we appreciate all of our all of our volunteers very much. Uh, let's see lacrosse. We, I just handed out lacrosse gear today to all of our lacrosse coaches. So you'll see them out at PCC field. You'll see them at Mount View and you'll see them on Saturdays at the high school. We partner with the high school um, head coaches for that. Adult League basketball will we'll start at Mountain View uh, at the end of this month. We start middle school track also is uh, starting up. We will be um, we're partnering, partnering with a high school track coach, Coach Ramey, with that too. And we currently, we started with COVID, we started um, spring soccer, which they tried in the past, but with COVID, we got an outdoor activity. We're on it, we're all over it. And we have over 450 kids registered. So that's incredible. We're, You'll, they're going to be at Jake with, and they're going to play during the week, so that'll be fun. And then, of course, Napa softball returns first weekend in uh, March. So we're getting ready for that, and then, of course, we're working with the baseball programs because they will have their tryouts this weekend, and then they'll start using our fields shortly for their games. And then pickleball is is really um, 
Hunter and I are really working hard on all that. We're trying to access as many grants as we possibly can. Uh, let's see. Senior Center, we hired a new gal. She's a specialist. Her name is uh, Sarah, and she's wonderful. Matt took her on a um, tour the other day of all of our facilities, so she's familiar. But the Senior Center is, we expect great things from her. She's a really neat gal, has a lot of energy, and her focus is, of course, Meals on Wheels and everybody that attends, but also creating more programming for the adults, senior adults in our community. Mark Martin. <laughs> um, I just chose Mark and not me. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, let's see. So care is going well. We're growing. Uh, we have up 200 kids now. We, Matt Compton, our care coordinator, he put in for a grant through the Oregon Department of Education. Yeah, that's that's great. Oregon. I saw that. That's great. Yeah. Yep. So fifty-six thousand dollars. We're we're excited. Good for Matt. Yeah, that was a that was a great get, and we just saw the first check came in. It was twenty-six thousand, and then I think there'll be three additional checks for that. And so we are really work. You know, there's some money to to be had through grants um, through the state of Oregon, and so we're really doing a lot of outreach to be a part of that. Um, the I only, request. The only thing we should mention is Rennie oh. Gill with the school district. Uh, the meeting with their board members and our board members will be March 9th, is that correct? That yeah. is sure. what they proposed and I've reached out. Right. Of course, we have Don and Gail as your representatives. Right. I haven't been able to reach and confirm with either of them, but I'm working to confirm them for that meeting. No, it's just them, right? It's not is it the entire board or just It them? is the just, district just, facilities just, committee. Right. Okay. If, if, we, if we involve the entire board, we have to call a public meeting. No, it's not that I want to go. Yes. <laughs> right. But everything will come back to you. But I just wanted you to know that's moving forward. Okay. I've got one thing for Julie, if you could help me out with this. Sure. Is, uh, you know, Tara's been a long time employee with us. Yeah. And, and her husband is not doing well right now. Right. And so I was hoping that you or Kat it sends something from the district hopefully that he gets better because he's in a really bad way and george has been george coached for yeah. i don't know how many years for the park district so so i just talked to tara uh, we're in daily communication yeah and, i didn't know what to bring up here i just was hoping yeah it yeah bless her heart um so and i she she would be comfortable with me sharing but he is up at ohsu and he had um, surgery a couple days ago. A couple days ago, and he's um, he's she's just she has a lot on her plate right now. So we're trying to it's budget season, obviously, and so Wendy's really stepped up and is completing the budgets. We're working on those together for her. Um, I, Casey and I talked about this, I think it was Monday, and right now he, so he had surgery on Monday, and then he had some pressure, and so they took him in for emergency surgery last night, mm -hmm. and he is right now in ICU, so we were thinking that he can't have flowers while he's there, but once they move him to the neuro unit, which is where he was, and then he had to go back to ICU after a second surgery, um, we will definitely do that. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you for mentioning that. Sure. She's a tough bird. He is tough, but mm -hmm. yeah, he's gone through several different issues yeah. physically right now. So yeah. I hope for the best. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for mentioning that. I agree. Thank you, Julie. Mm -hmm. Kat, do you have? No, I don't have too much tonight. Um, I just wanted to mention the ARPA grant. We are definitely going to uh, reapply again. Uh, if you wanted to refresh yourselves on the letters of support, they are on the website. 
uh, on the Newburgh Bypass uh, Trail web page, and I did uh, direct them to that uh, last night in the presentation, and I'll be sure and reiterate that. So. So Richard actually wanted to mention something, though, from IT. Hi. So um, you guys uh, just got a piece of paper set or given to you. Uh, that is a phishing email to our staff members uh, using uh, a board member's first and last name. I guess they got it from our website. Normally, we don't see board members being used in phishing emails that we received. Uh, so this is a new type of attack. They actually had to get uh, email addresses from our website and then find our board member names and then, you know, an email address and send the, the actual emails out to our members. Again, this type of phishing attack is we've seen it everywhere else. Basically, go get me some gift cards, you know, Visa gift cards, uh, you know, for staff handouts. And yeah, so uh, it was sent to at least two staff that we're aware of, and we're going to be sending a staff email alerting them to this. But since it involves the board, uh, you guys should know. So if you see anything or hear anything in your emails, uh, send them to me or to it-security at cprdnewberg.org. I know. I started reading through this when Julie hit it. I'm like, well, you know, I have not been on my... I have not that was been not... <laughs> this was not me. Yeah, that was not uh, uh, our... our you know, um, employee doing all those emails, that was, that was me. Um, so, you know. I received yeah. one from Lisa. You, you did too? Yeah, I did too. So. Yeah. I, I love you all, but I didn't send it to you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, man. Do you think it would help with ARPA to be able to have the trail committee respond somehow? Yeah, just sit, hit City Hall when they're doing their presentations. <laughs> I'm just asking the question. Well, I'm wondering if maybe they should be the ones to go in and do some kind of a, you know, to, is there somebody on there that would be ready to 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 do that request as a as a rather than as a district? Do you have people, community the members. community members that are going out there saying we're doing all of this work to try to make sure that we have a better place for y'all and well that's a very interesting idea i think we could get them uh prepared and rallied um i would probably want to go uh with them and have that yeah. in hybrid with staff um but uh yeah thank you for making that we'll, we'll explore that yeah. i think they'd be there would be plenty well, of people on the committee. Yeah. Yeah. There are some good people, especially the funding group. I'm really surprised they did not select it. I mean, you're doing. Oh, and Casey, can I make a request of you? Like, when you, um, I, I know I'm on the CCC board as a CPRD board member, right? Um, and I, I know you're having this meeting um, to start going over that stuff. And I don't, I should, I should try to talk to them to figure out who on the board. I think it's probably Rick Lee or somebody else that's probably participating in some of this activity with the architect and everything to do the next phase. You know, I think Rick was there the first meeting. Uh, Basically, I think it's Sean. It's yes, Sean. See, like, yeah. So, if you just let me know, I, will I mean, you information as I get. It. Yeah. And I will let him know that I, I, I would like to be okay. included on that. And I may be there too. To well, that's why I brought it up. If you yeah. guys want to show up, that's yeah, right. I brought it down. So, thank you. I appreciate it. All right, next on the agenda are citizens' comments. And the lady that does not <laughs> like chatty Kathy is yeah. still oh sending God. unsigned notes. So did you see, so uh, her and I talked, and this was prior to George uh, going into the hospital, but she attended the class. Did, was that in there? Did she? No, she, they asked, the letter asked yes. for somebody to come and attend. Yeah, and we've been, and we've, we, we did that a while ago. And there was nothing so Tara actually got in the water and took the class and nothing interesting so there yeah so there is a lady though that is in that class uh she's older she's a really neat gal she participates in a lot of different things she does water x and she's there every day she I would say she's probably 
late seventies or something, I guess. And she is very hard of hearing. So Tara kind of stood next to her while they were exercising. And of course the instructors, we have two different instructors and we told that we, they've had conversations with the class, you know, about, Hey, please be respectful of other people and all that. And uh, so the instructors are on the lookout for it too, you know, but Tara was actually in the class and she kind of went around and nothing. That's so weird. So, I don't know. And then Wendy actually was guarding the other day and she, there, she said there were two little groups that were a little loud, but nothing that was disruptive right? or just yeah like demonstrative in the way that they were nobody seemed bothered let's just say that so i don't know yeah that's weird one well, that they don't put their name to it either is kind of right. it's just really yeah. really odd to me that it's like if you have a real complaint stand up and have a complaint you know <laughs> yeah well the language is kind of interesting in it yeah and, exactly. you know it's i don't know so we'll continue to monitor that class We'll continue to have staff there just to make sure, um, kind of massage that for a while and just make sure that it's, you know, that we're doing the right thing. And then also that to show that we're there yeah, and we're, we're watching. Yeah. So. One, one thing that was in the packet that we didn't talk about uh, much was the uh, childcare stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm really glad that you guys are going to start talking with DCI and you know adec or gfunk or whoever because they you know they've been talking about this child that there's a there's no child care and i'm like cprd has care cprd has care like have you guys talked to them and it, I, they just don't i don't think they understand what it is that is already in place here um that could be built on even if if, if you wanted to if they're gonna bring they're looking at it for their staff, right? Yeah. Maybe care activities. So what we will do, Lisa, is currently with the city, uh, the Newburgh School District, we give their staff a discount. We'll do the same with this. Uh, we'll oh, no, 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 no. Get the, the, the businesses to pay you. No, so no, that... no, no. What I'm saying is is that with the college if they're willing to do like they said they were going to do with their students and stuff which right. will help okay. us yeah. immensely right. then we will do like with the school district they give us the facilities and stuff so we give them right. a 40 percent yeah. we'll do okay. the same with the college yeah. and yeah. those type things Okay. But we'll sit down and work with them and talk with them and go. I think what occurred is somebody somewhere at some point said there's all this money for child care. Uh, they didn't know about care. And one thing led to another. And when we stepped in, when we heard about it and stepped in, what I was told and what we were told was, well, it's, all, it's too late. We've already applied. It's already underway. But wait a minute. No one's talked to us. No one has conferred. And you're saying there's a desert here and you, you're spending $100,000 on the feasibility study which is ridiculous and we're not supposed to say anything and we stepped on some toes that good i well it it is good but unfortunately when you get your toe stepped on you have a tendency to want to retaliate and uh i think there was some of that again that's an opinion, not a fact. I uh, want to clarify that, but we decided early on we would not let it go. We've stayed on it. We keep going back. We keep Good. going back. Yeah, because, you know, it, okay, so DCI was the first one that was interested in, in it, and, I, and, and Rick and I spoke to them, and I said, you need to get in touch with CPRD. They have a care group. 
difference. Yeah, and probably. then when I was at this cultural center board meeting, they wanted, oh, a, um, ADEC wanted to rent out the, the, those last classrooms on, that haven't been fixed yet at the end to have daycare in there, that they would have this permanent daycare. I'm like, eh, that is not a good idea. That's not what that building is, is really there for. Talk to CPT. <laughs> So I don't, I don't, I, I don't understand what their reluctance is to talking to CPRD about this because it exists. You can build it, on it. It is possible. It's, I have not been able to trace it down. It is possible there, there was a move made and maybe somebody from this agency did respond. Mm -hmm. uh, that is possible but I've not been able to find it. Uh, and uh, in the meantime, we are responding. Yeah. I think so. just the opposite. I think that Matt often reached out to Tim. I was there, mm -hmm. reached out to Tim weekly. And oh, then wow. we would have a meeting, um, our mayor's meeting, like every other, or I think it was every Friday. Yeah. And we brought it up. And he and Tim from DCI would say, you know what, we don't have any information to share with you on that yet. And so that went on for a long period of time. And then it kind of switched to the schools getting involved with it. And they were going to potentially put it some, some um, they were or over by CV. Yeah, yeah over by CV. They were going to put the child care there, which is in which is interesting because Roland. we have care there right at crater, you know, it's our biggest site. And um, so I just I thought, gosh, that's the that just doesn't make sense. We're we're literally right there and we have access to all of that space. And also it's we are so reasonably priced. Exactly. That's just the, that's the thing that I don't get about all of this is that there's no one in town that offers, or even Yanko County that offers childcare cheaper, I shouldn't say cheaper, but um, at a great price <laughs> than we do. No, so I kind of, well, I tried to, I don't know what's. Yeah, so we'll just continue to, you know, reach out, but. If anybody can find out anything, <laughs> let us know. It, it, I had the feeling when we had talked to Tim, that they really wanted something specific on their site for their people yes. and that then maybe they if they had extra they would have it and, and I think they want want it. I got the feeling they wanted more control and that if it's with CPRD, maybe that they don't have it, they didn't say anything like that, but that's just more kind of the idea of what I was. Well, they were asking us DCI Tim was asking us hey how do you run this. <laughs> how, do you, how do you do this? And you know, actually, to be quite honest, I think a lot of it too was they realized there's so much that goes into that. Yeah, it's the DHS checks. It's the, you know, it's very the um the paperwork and is very uh there's just a lot to it, and I just don't think that it was equitable for them to kind of go down that road. I think our what you do sometimes is you have a tendency to want to do this, but in reality, what we need to ask is why did this occur? What are we not doing? How are we not reaching out? Where are other avenues? What, what are we doing? And point the finger in. And I think if we do that, rather than trying to be defensive, uh, will be better off uh, and we're going to do that now especially with the college and the other things and try to get a better understanding and go from there if it's where they want total control then my question is why would why would we fund that with public money right I don't understand that. Uh, right. That may be what it comes down to, but why would you fund it with public money? I don't get that. That's not even, 
I don't think it's possible. And if you want to charade it and say, well, we'll, we'll put a few in, I'll fight that. Because that's discriminatory. And it's not the right way to go about it. So how, how we can work it out, we'll find out. But, I got one other thing on comments from the public. Yeah, on this, um, this yeah, they talked about um, um, was Patrick, I guess it was. Um, page two was in here. You responded to her about the trash that was being left, and, and she was picking it off the street. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't see response. Uh, yeah, Casey actually spoke with that person, so I'll let him give you a report. I spoke to them. They. Uh, Walk with their family, and so they're picking up extra garbage around. That's awesome. All down by the golf course and up Butcher uh, and Providence, and so they're reflecting extra trash. And That's awesome. It was great, but we didn't know it was there, and we're only picking up garbage once a week. So, so we've solved the problem, and we're good we, with it. Every time. Yeah, pretty good. As a matter of fact, uh, <laughs> uh, who Mike Googler walks his dogs and yeah. he's always picking up trash and he was putting it in the garbage container there at the uh, golf course and someone told him that he shouldn't be putting <laughs> trash in it and uh, i had to go in and tell him what he was doing you know those type things are going to occur from time to time somebody sees something they respond no, I'm, just, I'm just glad it was resolved and we were positive with the yeah. folks and they should yeah. keep doing it because we appreciate yeah. it right yeah so so does the city huh? yeah yeah all right is there anything else uh i just like to let you know that uh at city club our march guests will be uh sean daly George Fox, Chief Strategy Offer Officer, on March 1st. And on March 15th, we will have Matthew Westerbrook from Catholic Charities of Oregon talking on Afghan refugees in Oregon. And a reminder that we do not, we've waived membership fees for this entire season. So if you would like to receive a free Zoom invitation and share it as you will, so just contact me all. Can you send that out to us? Yeah. Because I used to go, but I get no notifications anymore. I'll so. put you, I will subscribe you. Okay. Thank That'd you. Great. Yeah. All right. Or you want to? To subscribe you, or you rather not? What's that? City Club. Yeah, subscribe me. Yeah, okay. I, hard, I have a hard time getting away from work, but it, yeah. there's times when it's something special, I'll work around it. So. Okay. Okay. Anything else? No, but it'll be good to get rid of these men. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I moving to adjourn. Forward. Okay, you move to adjourn. I guess we have I'll a second. Adjourn. You don't even have to second. Yeah, you just have to okay. yeah. <laughs> and thank you all for yeah. all you continue to do. You guys are awesome.